Here at home, the Boston Pops will again be playing their annual 4th of July spectacular, thanks to a new lead sponsor announced today in grand fashion at Symphony Hall. I've heard that. For the next three years, Boston-based investment management company, Eaton Vance, will be the presenting sponsor of the 4th of July concert, and Bloomberg will be the media partner broadcasting the concert on cable TV, radio, and online. This is huge news for those of us who have counted on this tradition for more than four decades, particularly since longtime organizer David Mugar decided to step down. Pops is now at the helm, and the countdown to the 4th begins. Joining me now are Boston Pops conductor, Keith Lockhart. Nice to see you, Keith. Hi, Jim. And uh, uh, from Eaton Vance CEO, Tom Faust. Tom, congratulations. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you, Jim. So glad this worked out because I was afraid I was going to have to invite you over for ribs on the floor. <laughs> so yeah. so who, reached out, how'd this, who reached out to who? Well, um, I knew about it just from contacts within the symphony and in the community. And I would say it was us who reached out probably because we're not someone that the pops would have occurred to. We haven't done a lot of this kind of thing, this kind of visible event support in Boston. But for me and the leadership of our company, this was a special opportunity that really uh, led to a special gesture from us, which is to say we want to be the presenting sponsor of this event. And you said this morning at the press conference, because you've been here, what, almost 100 years, 90-some yeah. years? Yeah. But it's a huge PR hit. I mean, when you said it's not for that, is that only half true? No, it's, well... Uh, we're letting our name be used so people will know that Eaton Vance uh -huh. is the presenting sponsor. But it is. This is about giving back to the community. That's what we're doing. Uh, and we're, uh, we're, we're happy to be in a position to support it and honored to be associated with this great event, which I first knew as a college kid back uh, So you've been. That was my next oh, yes. You've been. Yeah, yeah, so was years ago. he the only suitor or the best suitor? <laughs> I'm the wrong person to ask that question. <laughs> All that uh, happened with our people, our, our president and our two producers from B4. Uh, but I, when I heard about this, I was, I was thrilled. Uh, but as you pointed out, surprised, because they have not, Eden Vance has not historically had its name in, you know, big, uh, big letters behind the Fenway dugout. And, uh, You've done Dana-Farber and other yeah, really important things, things, but yeah. not like headline kinds yeah, of things. Yeah, that's right. Thing. That's so right. did you know him before? Nope. Were you mm. nervous about this? <laughs> I mean, I'm yeah, serious. You, you don't know a, a guy who's going to be intimately involved in your work. It's a first date situation. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so not for the public relations. How many people said this is a Faustian bargain? I'm not going to do that, but I have 100 <laughs> today. I knew, I, I knew they would. So, so talk about the TV thing, which I don't 100% get. You seem to be ecstatic about this thing today. Bloomberg, which isn't sort of like a household name in TV, but you seem thrilled. Why? Well, again, I think it's uh, a, a situation with a company taking on something that we don't normally associate with them with, but that is eminently prepared to do that. Uh, Bloomberg has an incredible platform. They are in somewhat something like 437 million yeah, households worldwide. Uh, so to have them as a, as a uh, for content on cable, for uh, free internet streaming from the same platform, and for radio, uh, gives us a reach that we've honestly never had before. So also give you some freedom that you maybe haven't had before? Well, I think it's it gives us the freedom, and also we were very careful to make sure that we had that freedom. Uh, it's very important to us that the Pops remain front and center in this event, and uh, no matter, without disparaging anybody else, when there are a lot of cooks uh, with a lot of different goals, uh, perhaps different than what we at the Pops think the goal of the event should be, then you have to make a lot of compromises. Why don't you disparage somebody else? Okay. Who, who, not, who, what are you talking about? Too many, what does too many cooks mean? Too many sponsors? Well, too many what? You don't have last, to name names. For the last several can. years, we have uh, had a situation where we have a three-hour window to fill, of which only at one point one hour of it went to the national feed. Uh, the national feed was uh, sponsored by CBS, of course, and, uh, and they were largely responsible for determining content during that period of time. But also, much of the resource that was allocated to the concert as a whole ended up going to that last hour. So we had kind of a tale of two different concerts within that. This allows us to, you know, to evenly spread the resource across the whole show. We know you know money. Do you know music at all or no? Not much. So no. are you going to be, in, I mean, you or your colleagues more are than involved? More than I know money. In, would you say? <laughs> is it more than I know money? <laughs> are you going to be involved in the content at all or is it a hands-off kind so of deal? So we, w the only thing we've said is that we want it to be a patriotic and family-oriented uh, celebration in the tradition of the Boston Pops Fourth of July. 
period. And that's it. Stop. And then it's on in him and his colleagues. Uh, exactly. Right. And you don't have to run anything by you. Say we're doing. I know we have Melissa Etheridge, who I love. Andy Grammer, I love Melissa. I love them both, but Melissa Etheridge, mm -hmm. ridiculous. You don't have anything to do with that. It's his. Call. We don't. Okay. So go. But you're an MIT kid. Is that what you were? Is that right? Yes. Is that really true? You really did go to the pops. When I you were did. A kid? Yes. And so what? What do you remember? Um, well, you can't really say everything that you remember from the I'm college. sure you can. <laughs> Thank you very much. Tell us what you can tell us. Uh, we would, uh, I, I lived in a fraternity house at MIT on uh, Beacon Street, and uh, it was a 4th of July tradition that, uh, I don't know, about midnight or 10 a.m. Uh, or 10 p.m. on the night before, a group would head over, and we'd stake out our turf, and we'd spend the day out on the Esplanade and listen to great music and watch fireworks at night. And were you thinking about that? I'm serious. When you were going through the negotiations with them, were those experiences like front and center? A little bit. Yeah. I, I got some emails today from friends from that era and said, you know, well oh, done. that's great. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I was, uh, were you worried? We talked about this right after the time David Mugar decided he wasn't going to do it anymore and you were here and I can't remember exactly what you said, but we talked about were you worried? And I think you said no, but now that it's done, were you worried? Well, I, you know, it's it's easy to bluster and say, of course, exactly. no problem. But uh, that having been said, of course, uh, this is a this is a turning point in the history of the event, and uh, I didn't want to be the officer on deck at the point that the ship <laughs> <laughs> was going down. And uh, I had I had great confidence in people who were out looking to secure the right relationship, and I, I thought it was going to happen. But nonetheless, it was a great sigh of relief when it actually did happen. I know you're not involved so much in the business end, but Fidelity is also involved in the, in the pops, right? Fidelity is involved as our sponsor for our uh, seasons in Symphony Hall. Our, Did they have to say, yes, and, I'm okay and, and with this guy things. and his company being involved I, I, or no? I, I don't Look know. Look at the smile I, on his face. <laughs> <laughs> he knows more than he's I, telling. You know, I, I, you know, basically, you know, arts organizations like, like us depend on a multitude of sponsors, and some of them have conflicting concerns, and uh, it is the job of the people who put these things together to make sure that each one gets what they need out of the agreement. So you, any concerns or you're all in? This is the d a done deal, you're ecstatic, July 4th is right around the corner, this is it, yes? Well, I've been around the block a little bit. I know that uh, getting an event of this scale done and done right and done successfully is always a bit of a challenge, but uh, we're, we're completely in. Are and you as happy as you look? You look really happy. <laughs> Are you really happy? I'm very happy. You I'm should be. Happy. It's great. And the, to happy. paraphrase Humphrey, Humphrey Bogart, I hope that's the beginning of a wonderful friendship. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations to so both. Me. It's really exciting right. to Thanks, the city Jim. and the community. Pleasure Thank you, to meet you, Tom. Yeah. Thanks so much, Keith. Pleasure as always.